Hi everyone, welcome to the QA Ops channel. I'm Rafael Lima, and in this video, we're going to continue to learn a little bit of, a little bit more about Rest Assure and its feature. If you haven't watched the previous videos, please do so so you can see the whole process of creating the project and using dependencies, Gradle, and so on and so forth. If uh, I'm going to post a link for those videos if you haven't watched, uh, please subscribe to the channel so you can receive the notifications of of the next videos. And let's start here. So as all the projects, we have a repository and I'm starting with the English master. And we already have uh, the test that we have been creating, right? So the first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to improve the naming of the tests because I didn't, I didn't give much thought when we initially created. So this test is actually listing the users on a specific page. We are given a page, page two in this case, and I'm listing the users and check if it's displaying the specific page that I wanted. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, I'm going to right click, choose refactor and rename. This way, any references, if there are any, they're going to update everything. So I'm going to say test. Uh, test display specific page is displayed great and this one test successfully created user i'm going to change to test able to create new user and the register test unable to register when password missing. This is great. So I already did the refactoring, doing a commit now. Git add dot, which is going to get that specific file. Uh, I didn't use git as all. Uh, I can use dot, but all would work even for new files. If I use dot and if we have a new file, which hasn't been committed yet, uh, it's not versioned, uh, it would not work. So git commit dash m, uh, rename test user test names. So awesome. So what I'm going to show you is still specific to the user page uh, and how we can improve these, uh, the, the, the page and, and a little bit of the features of Rest Assure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to our page so I can show you. And we are going to do the list user, right? So I'm going to do a single user, the same thing that we have. And now what I can do is I'm going to, actually I'm going to do the list. And I have a list of everything, right? So in one thing that I talked in the first or the second video, was that it would be great if I could check, right? Oh, here he's saying that I'm displaying six per page. Uh, and I would like to check that there are six here too, right? So that, that would be fine, but I do not control how many, the, the setup of the per page. So since I do not control the setup, it would be hard for me to create a, a self-contained test that would not fail for, uh, for, uh, unknown reasons, right? Or for setup reasons, let's say. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a new test. I'm going to say, this is test size of items displayed are the same as per page. So I'm going to copy and paste this content here all the way to here. And I'm going to adjust here the identification. Uh, and this this is pretty much the same test, right? The reason that I'm creating a new one, so I don't I don't delete, I don't get rid of this because this I'm checking the not new value and I'd like to leave that as an option. But in a in a real case scenario, there is no point of having this and, and this one unless you have a very specific reason to just check if there is, it's not new. 
Uh, but what I'm going to do here, I'm going to I'm going to close. I'm going to run this test. Great. So what I want to check, I want to show you a specifics of uh, rest assured uh, functionality, which is I want to check that, that the amount of items in the data is the same as here. So rest assured uses a uh, the same as Groovy Collection, right? So it uses, it has the, the Groovy Collection, uses the Groovy Collection. So and that's very powerful and you can do a bunch of things. You can check uh, a lot of things. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm also going to go ahead and show another way to create the body. <laughs> because we have been creating the body in this way, I can actually change a little bit and I can uh, send everything to parameter to the body, right? So I can break here the line, I can just put it here and I can say I want this to be uh, data and I want this to be size and now I'm already using the groove collection this is the size uh, function the size feature the size functionality the size so here I'm using the size right and say so this is the size uh, method of the groove collection and what I'm going to say is I want the size to be six. Of course, now you are losing a little the, the not a little, you're losing everything. You are losing the, uh, for using Groove Collection, you are using, you, we are losing the IntelliJ uh, features of, uh, of displaying the object and helping you a little. You're going to have to go to the Groovy documentation to see what is displayed and, and, and possible for you. Uh, but if we go to the rest assure, so let me go to rest assure documentation. documentation. I'm going to go to the get started and they have a user guide and I think collection. So here uh, it has So it's showing you that it uses the Groovy collection and gives you already a few ideas of what you can do. You also can go to the Groovy documentation and, uh, and check that out there too. So I'm going to run this and there, it's working, right? And this is a different way for you to create uh, your assertive. So what else I can do, I can check the content here. Also, I would like to check the items specifically. I would like to check the content. I would like to use a regular expression. You can do a lot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I would like the data, right? And data, remember that data is a collection, right? So this is uh, an array of items. So this is a collection that I can do find all. And find all is a feature on rest assured that is going to find, sorry, not rest assured on Groovy, that's going to find every item that is specified. And the return of find all is going to be an array of all the items that it found. So the syntax is I open and close a, a curly bracket. I put it as for iterator, so it's going to find, it's going to go through each and every one of the data. So it's going to go on this, and then this, and then this, and it's going to apply this on whatever I'm going to say now. And I'm going to say, I would like the avatar to start with, and I pass on the parentheses, I mean, I'm going to use uh, single, uh, single columns, and I'm going to say I would like it to start with only the, with this, and I don't need that. Right, so, I'll, so what I'm saying is I'll, I want you to search the data, do a find all on data, 
and for each item I want you to look for the avatar that starts with https s3 amazon lws.com so it's going to go in this one it's going to say hey does avatar start with this it does so it's going to store that in a separate in a result array then it's going to go to this other one it's going to find it does it have yes it's going to store that too and it's going to store every single one that's fine so what i want to do i want to make sure uh, here I know in this case that all of them has this Amazon AWS not sure if this is what you want to do but I'm just showing you that that's possible I want this to be six because all of those items should have Amazon AWS and I would like to be six because it's the total one so what I'm going to say here is I want the so the result of this array is going to be after the curly bracket curly brackets right because in between the curly brackets is a for loop and when it finish it's going to return and the return is going to be here and i'm going to do size because it's the size of the end result of the array and i'm going to say is six right and this is it this is the same here right so we have a string with what i want and then the assertion and i have a string of what i want and the assertion here is finding everything on the data is doing a for loop in between the brackets curly brackets and the result is doing a size on the result of everything that had s3 amazon aws.com and it must be six so i'm going to run this test great uh, does it work so let's check I would like I'm going to check now if it's five and what I'm going to do is right down here it says oh it's we expected five but it was six so yeah so it worked so this give you gives you the ability of doing a lot a lot a lot a lot right but this is not good yet of course because this we are using hard-coded value right if I if I if I if I set up my test if I set up my whole environment on my test and I knew that my setup was six and I control that this would be okay but I don't so what I want to do is I want to be dynamic so what I'm going to do is I'm going to retrieve the per page and I'm going to retrieve six and I'm going to modify this one for the actual value of this one and this is a very interesting feature in rest assured because when we are dealing with apis you often have to retrieve a token right so the api does, doesn't know doesn't know you you are you right it needs to control who has access it cannot give control to everybody right it, it deals with sensitive data so usually i request a token and in in that in, in that request i use an authentication feature of the api right and when i authenticate the api say i do recognize this authentication here is a token for you to use on my api on any api on any call that you want to do so i retrieve that token and now i got the token and i have a token now that i can use through whatever i'm doing usually that token expires so it's like you have a token uh it's going to be good for a couple seconds like 300 seconds 200 seconds and once it expires then depends on the api you can uh restore that token refresh that token or you have to create another one right the api is not going to remember you doesn't even know who you are so this is a feature that you can use to retrieve a token let's say you need to first get a token and then you need to do all your tests then you're going to call that token that the specific uh, endpoint for the token you're going to retrieve that token and then you're going to use the token for all of your tests and that could be your setup right in this case i'm going to be retrieving the six here so what i'm going to do I'm going to say I want a this is an integer right so I'm seeing here this is an integer this is not a string 
code per page item per page so to be more meaningful and this is a similar process I do a given right and on my given I have a parameter because this is the same thing that I want to do right so I'm saying the parameter saying page uh, two right and I do a when so when I do that I, I need to do a get right so I'm, I'm going to the same place so this is the same I don't need this list users it's the same endpoint that I'm hitting and I do a then right in my case I'm going to check the status code why I'm checking the status code if I only to retrieve this because it's very important for me that the status code HTTP status is 200 it's very important that the HTTP status is 200 because if it's not I don't even know I don't even need to do the rest right and I want my logs to be meaningful if I do, didn't do this and it did not retrieve what I wanted because it was not able to retrieve I would be searching for stuff. I would be like, why it's empty? Why it did not retrieve? What happened? But now, if since I'm putting a status code, I'm, I'm check. I, I'm checking the status code. I'm actually say if it's not 200, failed, failed the test, and you're going to let me know, right? So when I look at my logs, I'm going to say, hey, I tried to hit this endpoint, and it was not 200. So I actually in instantaneously know that it was not 200 and I'm actually going to know in the logs which status code was so I have a, a more direction to where to look at it so now this is the magic now I'm going to say not here I'm going to say I would like to extract and what do I like to extract I would like to extract the path per page right so this is what I want to extract and it's going to put this value in here. How do I check that? So I'm going to put a breakpoint here. I'm going to right click my test. And instead of choosing run, I'm going to do debug. I could use this, this uh, shortcut too. Instead of R, I use D. So now I can actually see here IntelliJ giving me two in two places, it's six. And I also can check here that it's six, right? So we were able to retrieve, which is great. So now this is where the magic starts, right? So I can now come here and change this for items per page. Items per page. I like. I I, I also would like to be more meaningful in my in my in my naming so items per page when I'm reading this doesn't tell me much that does tell me but it, it could be better so what I'm going to do I'm going to refactor this the same way that we refactored the method but this time I'm going to use shift f6 for the shortcut for refact renaming and see that it already highlighted everything here so I'm going to actually say uh, expected expected items per page right so this is going to be the actual and this is what I expect awesome so let's see if this works I could leave it here as long as I don't run with the debug mode it's going to ignore the breakpoint so awesome this is this is great how can I check if this actually works so I can just force this to be I don't know seven and I can rerun it and it failed because it's it's not the same right so but this is ugly as hell right so I'm looking here I have this and I have this it's very polluted so what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
to extract these into a specific method. Right, and, and uh, IntelliJ help, 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 help me with that too. So I can just select everything, right click, refactor, and I can select uh, extract method. It's going to ex uh, ask a name, it's actually suggest me, right, based on the return, get expected items per page, looks okay. Do refactor, and it's already created, right? So and it did all the magic for me, right? So it, it already, uh call the method and put the return here so in new because uh I, I was already putting that on a variable that was an integer in new that should create a method uh with a return of integer and it uh it should be putting on also a variable and use that variable here so a very magical thing on rest assured sorry IntelliJ and I can run my test awesome uh, what else we have here I can I can improve this a little bit but what I'm going to do which I should have done before is create a commit and git add dot git status git commit message and what i'm going to do is what did we do we did a um, add test to check that the the that data items match per page awesome so I, I could improve here a little, right? Because this method is always going to the page two. I, I would like to change that. I would like to retrieve any any page that I would like. I don't want a, a method that I can only use for a specific page. So what I'm going to do real quickly here is I'm going to say int page. And here, I'm going to change for page. I'm going to rerun everything. And oh yeah, I forgot to actually send, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I would like uh, int page is two. I'm going to send page here too, right? And I'm going to rerun it. Great. I'm also, since I'm using page two there, I'm going to change here that I want these to be the same, right? So I cannot request a page. I cannot request the per page for a specific page and then do the test for another page. So, and I can also do it here too, because this is the page that I'm expecting to see, right? So I'm going to call page, but again, the naming is not really good. So what I can do, I can refactor, and this is my expected page. Rename all occurrences. No, code occurrences per uh, expected page. Awesome. Great. So I can also add here and do git status git add dot git status git commit dash m and I can say um, make uh, make able to use any page awesome great so this is this is great so it's it's much better now and uh, my test is more reliable right? of course i'm still using this this is not awesome because it could be any value since this is a test environment but this is a great show you the the, the possibility that you can do 
this is what I wanted to show you. So let's create a commit, uh, a branch actually. So it's git checkout dash b English five. What did we do? We did a uh, groovy collection and extract git push origin and my branch and it's already there so thank you for watching if you haven't subscribed yet please do so so you can help me broadcast this message to more people if you like it give the thumbs up and i see you in the next video mm -hmm.